<laughs> welcome everybody and welcome to the launch of In Defense of Children. We are a non-partisan organization. Uh, we are dedicated to collecting testimonies and helping to educate parents and teachers about what's really going on in schools and the programs that promote um, self-hate for our children amongst their bodies. So Kat, I'll get you to introduce yourself. Okay, my name is Kat. I run a uh, program for marginalised youth. I take um, schizophrenic, bipolar, autistic, trans, gay, high anxiety kids and I train them up in tech stuff and put them into high tech jobs for about 75k in their first job at 19 years old. And I'm also part of the gay community, which is not really anything to do with anything at all, but it's kind of useful. And I'm a teacher and I've been teaching uh, for over a decade and I'm also a parent and I, like many other parents and teachers, have been deeply shocked uh, to see the kinds of programs that have been going out and the damage that they're doing to the whole school community. And so that's why we've decided, because people are afraid to speak out, to provide a way that people can send their stories to us, tell us what's really going on without suffering all the exclusion and bullying and maligning that they would inevitably experience from their school community. Yeah. Yeah. I actually want to start off um, with something a little bit unusual, I suppose, because during the week there was uh, this all this hoo-ha around the City Point uh, Christian College over in Queensland. They had, according to the media, ABC, SBS, etc., they had made a contract um, last minute for the parents that they had to sign, which all the trans community was saying was highly transphobic and homophobic, etc. So I decided I'd actually read it and uh, see what was actually said in it. And um, I, I do want to discuss it further along, but I, from, um, I want to sort of take a little intercept, as it were, in our launch to make a statement from uh, an LGB point of view, and it's this. If you, it's talking as a gay woman, if you are a parent of a, a lesbian or a gay child, I highly recommend that it's better that you put that child into a Christian school than a public school, which I know given the traditional history around Christianity and homosexual, homosexuality, might be quite a shocking statement to make. But here's why I make it. Because across the public schools, if you look into the policies of, say, uh, New South Wales Department of Education, Bulletin 55, or Victoria's Department of Education's concept of mature minor, which bypasses parental authority, or other states, you're going to find that they are all engaging in something called SOGI, which is sexual orientation or gender identity uh, training. Um, and it's where, basically it means it's where a school will recognize, uh, it's where a school will take a gender non-conforming child and they will identify them as trans. So we find a gender non-conforming child is generally uh, mostly about 75% gay or they're autistic or they're highly intelligent children who, um, who are generally non-conforming or they're children who have um, various, uh, various issues like mental health issues or they've been sexually abused or they've got depression, etc., etc. These are the kids that come into the category of gender non-conforming. And these are the kids that are targeted as trans children. So if the school feels that the parent isn't going to be supportive of a trans child identity, they may decide, and they have decided in many different schools, that they will uh, assist in socially transitioning that child. What does social transitioning mean? It means that um, a child who um, is a male, they may um, call him a different name. They will allow him to go into the girl's toilet, wear the girl's uniform, to play on the girl's sports. With the girls, they will 
um, uh, let, uh, allow them to wear chest binders and again have a different name and go, go and do all the activities of the opposite sex. Um, you, if you ask where's the harm in that, the worst case scenario has been that's been public has been in the WA where they've taken a 14 year old child that's been both uh, lesbian and autistic and they've taken them from the parents for um, double amputation. It's been dark two and a half years now and the parents still haven't seen that child. And according to ROGD Parent Association, I think the court or ROGD Parent Group, there's nearly a hundred um, parents who are in the same situation. That's the worst case scenario. But generally speaking, what happens next after social transitioning is the school may decide that um, the child is ready for medical transitioning. So they'll bring in a gender clinic, say in Victoria, they'll bring in the Royal Children's Hospital from Melbourne, and they will recommend um, uh, using drugs on them called puberty blockers. They call them puberty blockers um, to pause their puberty. These drugs, which are gozerillin, triptorillin, and loperillin here in, um, we use in Australia, the animal trials on them failed. The, to test to see whether or not they would do harm, the animals were harmed. But they went ahead anyway, the trans lobby still market them, the gender clinics still use them. Recently in Finland and Sweden, um, their gender clinics, which were early adopters of using puberty blockers, where they've been taking children as young as 9 to 11 years old, and they have um, been using these drugs for three to four times, three or four months at a time for about two to more years. These kids now suffer osteoporosis and a whole lot of other phys severe physical damages that include intellectual capability, um, bone density issues, etc., etc. So that's one part. But it gets worse. Once these kids are on puberty blockers, the next stage is automatically is the next stage is using cross-sex hormones. And once children, young people use cross-sex hormones, you're looking at sterilization. And not only that, once you're on that whole train, you're on these drugs after medicalization and surgical transitioning and social trans. You're on these drugs for your whole of your life. But you're look looking also at uh, lifetime um, medical patient, uh, sterilization, loss of sexual functions, 20% increase of suicide. And after about six years, when these children become adults and they realize what they've lost, they've lost the capacity to have children, they've lost sexual function, there's about 25,000 of them on the Reddit board already. That's what, that's what you're looking at. And that's what's been promoted in public schools. So as a lesbian, I'm telling you right now that I'd rather see kids go into a decent Christian school that doesn't allow any of that, that recognizes biological reality because it will keep those kids safe. So I know that's controversial, but that's how I feel about it. So I thought maybe we'd um, talk a bit about it because on our website we've put a lot of resources together. Um, and I've also actually got the contract itself to look at that particular college if we want to do that. Um, and also because you've had experiences in schools, Christian and public, you might want to have a chat about that. So yeah. let's talk. Well, I agree with you, Kat. And I, can I just say that lots of Christian schools have actually been finding that parents are making that exact decision. Really? So I was speaking to a local principal last year and he said that uh, even he hadn't really, sorry, it was two years ago, he hadn't really heard of the Safe Schools program. And he had parents ringing him up saying, is your school a safe school though? And he would say, yes, it is safe for school, you, you know, going around, you know, of course it's safe. And they'd say, no, 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 I'm in the safe schools program where, where they teach children that they can choose whether they are male or female, that they can identify into a different sex. And he would, at first he said, absolutely not, we wouldn't teach that here. And as a result, their enrolments have gone through the roof. They've been able to take out a huge bank loan to build extra buildings, build a whole childcare centre. Um, they've had Muslim families that can't access a Muslim school agree to send their kids there. Now, Christians are upfront about what they're going to teach your children. Yeah. And yes, they're going to teach your children sex, you know, what the Bible says about sex. I have taught in Christian schools and we're actually taught to say, to preface what we say with the Bible says, hmm. you know, that this is the Bible's view. Um, so that the children, you know, they have, if they decide 
that they want to live like what the Bible says. That's their choice. You know, they're not they're not coerced into anything. They're just taught what the Bible says, and they and they know that Christians believe that to be, you know, the word of God. And but other than that, you know, I have never I've never seen any bullying of gay children in a in a in a Christian school, and we've had no bullying of Muslim kids. Yeah. You know, we've had. You know, no systemic bullying, I guess. I'm sure there's bullying, but it's not because the kid was Muslim. It's not because the Christian school um, had something against gay kids or Muslim kids, you know. Obviously, there's bullying everywhere. But, um, you know, most schools are on top of it, and I don't think there's been systemic bullying of homosexual children for a very long time. Can, can I make a comment about that Safe Schools um, program? Yeah. Because I had a look to see um, who put it together. And um, over here in Australia, correct me if I'm wrong, but the safe school schools kind of program they have here is very much supported by ILGA. So ILGA, if people don't know, it's um, an organisation that uh, one of the things it's been doing is training um, LGBTQIA activists worldwide. They um, they tend to train on the communications, how to frame their communications, um, you know, how to reach people, how to make the story, as it were. But they also have a really bad reputation because they lost their ECOSOC status with the United Nations because they are affiliated with the um, Pedophile Information Exchange and also uh, NAMBLA, which is a North American Man-Boy Love Association. And they also, even when they got back into the United Nations, which they did earlier in um, last year, uh, they pushed again for the lowering of the age of sex. Uh, for children. Now, ULGA, I don't want to go too much into it, is also part of a collective um, to, um, that created something which we colloquially call the Denton's Handbook. Denton's is a worldwide um, lawyer firm. It created a whole bunch of laws that you need to put in place to get gender identity ideology into society. And um, uh, ILGA was part of that. And with the, um, the program, two things were the goals to put into laws in countries and one of them is to remove parental authority and the second one is to give children the ability to uh, make decisions about their medical uh, well uh, medical um, choices like taking drugs etc without the parents of uh, permission so that's why i found in victoria and on our website which we'll go through a bit a bit later we'll show you our website as this is a launch um, it was really interesting that they came up with this concept of mature minor. Do you know what that means? Well, I have to admit that before Safe Schools came around, I had never heard it. And that was after being a teacher for over a decade. Yeah. I've never seen it pushed in any curriculum anywhere. Um, for the whole of my teaching and for my teacher training, I was under the impression and I firmly believed that I was in a partnership with the parents. Yeah. I actually viewed them as my employers over and above the school. Yeah. I had a duty of care to the parents and I considered that other teachers had a duty of care to my child, you know, for me as the parent. Um, but then the Safe Schools program came out and I did see those things that you're talking about and I had never heard of ILGA, I had never heard of Dentons, I had never heard of all these things. And it was supposed to be an anti-bullying program. So at first I didn't look at it because I thought, good, that's nice, that's great. I don't allow children to get bullied, not for being gay, not for being overweight, not for being you know, less academic. I just don't allow bullying. Um, so, you know, I didn't worry about it, but that's nice. If they need to tick their box and virtue signal, that's fine. You know, they're behind as always with bureaucracies. But when I looked at those programs, it was all alien, the yeah. sex education stuff. In sex education, we had never, ever gone further than, um, you know, what is, what is, you know, how, how do we reproduce? Yeah. And, um, what are the laws? And, you know, if you're in a Christian school, you say, this is what the Bible says. And if you're not in a Christian school, they do, you know, they do. They have units saying different religions have different beliefs about what are the best sexual ethics. Yeah. Different philosophers have different ideas for the design of the family. So we would go through feminists. Some feminists believe that there should be no family. You could decouple children from the family and have them running around in a village or something like that. You know, we, we would go through a few different ideas and it was all just a discussion and it was fine. What we never, ever did was interrogate the children in front of their peers no less about what their sexual orientations are whether they feel like they fit into stereotypes we never promoted stereotypes i mean stereotypes were long gone even when i was in high school and suddenly they were back there were all these little role plays role sexual role plays one role play had 
a child that had to role play that he had been forced to give his uncle oral sex the night before. Oh, One of the role plays had a warning that came with it and said, your children, I have to find you the exact quote, your students may feel um, a sense of disassociation afterwards. And it had the advice that you were given after that was something like you can get them, tell them to get a drink of water or have a few minutes sit by themselves. And I thought, why would I do anything that caused my students to have a sense of disassociation. Why is this normal all of a sudden? And why, why is it my business whether they're gay or heterosexual? It's none of my business. They can tell me if they want to, nothing will change, but it's not my business to be talking to them about their sexual orientation. Furthermore, it was very erotic. So it didn't just go into, you know, oh, and we also covered STIs, I forgot to say that. Patty, how, how old, what was the age group for these kids? Usually, I mean, sex education, Probably, probably from year nine up, I would say, usually, but they've been pushing to get it earlier and earlier and more and more yeah. graphic. Yeah. So usually they would start with relationships education. Obviously, if you're in a religious school, like a Muslim school or a Christian school, they're going to have marriage in there. They're going to have heterosexual marriages. They're designed for family. If you're in a state school, they would talk about the laws around marriage, the different types of families. You can have a lesbian family. How would they have children? Um, you know, gay men, families, how would they access, you know, the ability to have children, that kind of thing. You would go through the laws. Um, and it was all just a matter of providing them with information on on what's what is the state of the law, what is the culture. There was no real, um, you know, there was no aggressive ideological indoctrination. Other than that, in a Christian school or a Muslim school, they would tell you yeah. what ideological ideas they're going to present to your children as being true from their perspective. And then your children obviously choose whether or not to adopt them. I know people who have baptised their babies in the Catholic Church yeah. so that they can send them to a Catholic school so that they don't have to send them to the private, sorry, the, the public school because they are so incensed about the fact that their child will have no right to single space toilets. Yeah. And they know now that, you know, even other parents are not allowed to know if there's a transgender Yeah. Kid, you know, and it's all fun and games. I noticed that the ABC did this gorgeous little show on a transgender kid in primary school. Yeah. And I thought, well, that's lovely. Isn't that sweet and innocent? They're all kind of asexual and agender even when they're little prior to puberty. It's after puberty where this becomes a massive issue and an issue of boundaries that you shouldn't break. Um, and they, they conveniently used an, a child that, you know, it's so hard to think of as having bad motives. But really, if you allow this transgender these transgender laws and policies to take hold in our schools, which they already have done, you're allowing male teachers into female sports yeah. children. You know, that's yeah. it's adults, it's older teenagers. Um, that's where the danger comes. And so, look, as a teacher, I was just incensed. It was erotic sex, sex education. It was, it looked like sexual harassment, to be honest, of the yeah. kids. It was really too much. It, it went into um, how to pleasure a partner, you know, asking kids what they had done, what they would be willing to do unbelievable this is not relationships education this looks like pedophilic grooming yeah i was not going to be taking part in that whatsoever and if any teacher said those things to any of my students or my children god forbid i would send in a complaint but what i've realized now is that actually i have no rights I, my complaint would be rejected because they have a legal cover now in victoria to do these things to say these things to children you know one of the things is there's that most people aren't aware of you know you're talking about abc what I notice is that most the um, the longest pieces on the City Point Christian College were done by SBS and ABC. Both of those organisations are signed up to the Australian Workplace Equality Index. And for people who don't know what that is, it is an audit that they have to adhere to from a trans lobby called ACON. ACON used to be great, it did HIV, but now it's a major trans lobby. And this audit, if you sign up to it, Everybody from top down to below has to um, has to be trained in gender identity training, which is they basically say trans woman a, a, a woman, trans men a men. Um, you tend to you feel any discomfort. It's because you're a bigot. That's, that's part it. of it. You're a bigot. Well, Single sex spaces, no. Firstly, they said just allow men into women's toilets, but now they're going for all gender toilets. You do that, which is in other words unisex toilets. You get a 158% increase in violent attacks against women when you do that, you know. And then just imagine when women, there's about 35%, I think, women have um, uh, miscarriages in public toilets. You don't want to have men around in a situation like that. 
Then you've got children, young girls when they're having periods. You don't want boys around that. In England, when they did that, had all gender toilets. What do the boys do when they come across tampons and things like that? They mocked the girls. They gave them a hard time. The girls didn't go to school when they had their periods, you know, that kind of thing. But ABC and SBS, getting back to the point, they've signed up to the audit. So they've got, as I said, no single sex spaces, remove gender language, remove mother, remove woman, Anything that talks about the biology of mainly the female, not the male, but mainly the female. Um, Very obviously sexist, which is ironic. Yeah. They have to market gender identity ideology. They, you, they have to sell affiliated programs like Minus 18 and Wear It Purple, etc. You, They have to donate. But these are organizations that are taxpayer funded, mm. correct? Am I correct? Yeah, well, absolutely right. correct. And they're paying a lobby to, to, be, to adhere to. This they're using thing. our taxpayer funds yeah. to pay an organisation for membership to that organisation, which then demands that we pay them more taxpayer-funded yeah. money for education and ideas and ideologies that are not neutral and that are not held by the majority of taxpayers in this country. No. And as well as one of the things they have to do is they're not allowed to say any negative about the transgenderism. So you don't hear about those 100 or so um, parents who have had their children taken away. Now, I actually read that exact piece of information because you told me about this earlier and I went yeah. digging and fell down a rabbit hole. And yeah. that is absolutely true. They do, um, they, ha they have the scoring cards. Yeah. And the organisation loses points. Was it 25, 25 points for that. Negative, yeah. negative yeah. press. Negative press about... 25 points. Issue. And it's like, I think, I can't remember, it's either three or five points to do a whole um, gender affirmation policy book, which is over 200 hours on that piece alone. I mean, I looked at a smaller um, audit that they did for Pride in Sport that Sports Australia and all those students sign up to, which is why you um, why they allow men into girls' sports, because they've signed up to it. But 14 out of the 18 criteria for the small audit for community sports groups was also marketing. So you've got two major TV outlets that have to market, market gender identity programs, have to argue... You're saying that to get this tick from ACON, yeah, it's not even about um, providing a safe space for even the trans people there. Yeah. Most of it was to promote trans ideology, to pay for marketing, to promote trans ideology in the general community. Yeah. Any, anyone signed up, which is the federal government, by the way, which is the prime minister's office, by the way, which is state and local governments, by the way, plus your major corporate uh, account, corporate organisations, you have to market um, your um, gender identity ideology for everywhere, you know. Even when you're looking at suppliers, you have to say, say, uh, ask them, are they compliant to all, you know, gender identity ideology? Tick the Basically, box. They're, f they're funneling funds to organisations who pay them for membership so and yeah. the, all down the supply chain in order to get business from the one above you also have to be a member of that same organization it sounds like it's just yeah. this massive slush it's a pyramid it's, it's a pyramid itself. it's also a pyramid yeah yeah it's a pyramid scheme of marketing and, in the meantime, and it's all done by stealth nobody most people aren't aware this is going it's very sneaky stonewall did it they adopted akon adopted it from stonewall so just but, for our viewers because yeah. until I fell down this whole entire rabbit hole, I had never heard of Stonewall. So it's big in your community, but I had never heard of Stonewall. Can you tell our viewers? Well, Stonewall um, you, used to be very well known and really well respected in the early days of um, LGB people trying to get equality of rights, like marriage. But actually just things like the right to to have relationships and not go into jail and not be... Because there was some horrible things happening there. There was electrocutions, electroshocks and... Oh, yeah, awesome. Ice baths and, and, you know, and... Is this most in the UK, Stonewall, or am I incorrect about that? Yeah, it's Stonewall UK we're talking about. There's also, I think, a Stonewall USA, but Stonewall UK. And so it's a body that fought against um, really discrimination, cool. you know, yeah. discrimination. Yeah. And they were successful and they were really, really good. But there came a point where they sort of ticked all the boxes of things they won for uh, and then they had a look and they could either have, either have gone to um, help LGB people in other countries. That's the way they could have gone. Mm. But what they did instead is to form this kind of training audit scheme and people for scoring woke points. Like when you fill this, this, this audit sheet and check the boxes, you get so many ticks and then you go on a leaderboard. So you're competing against everybody else. So use gamification principles so that you can be 
um, better than somebody else in the virtual signaling points. It's an actual yeah. leaderboard for being the most trans inclusive organization where yeah. you get awards. Yeah, and you get a badge. And at the end of the year, you can go to a dinner and you get awards and everyone looks at you and takes your photograph. For all, for photographs and badges, we're selling out kids. And the people that are, uh, uh, and, and, and I can tell you, I'm part of um, LGB Alliance. I'm not speaking on behalf of them at this time. Also part of LGBT Tasmania. I'm not speaking on behalf of them on this time as well. But I can tell you that the people who are most harmed by this ideology have been lesbian, bisexual and gays because they do not recognize same-sex attraction. We've been kicked out of our own pride marches. We've, particularly lesbian children, girls we're worried about, young girls worried about, because they're all pushed to, to trans to remove their breasts, you know, to, um, to try to appear to be male. We even, one of my friends... There are people on the other side that would say, no, 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 these, these people thought that they were gay, but they're not really gay, they're really trans. And before the trans lobby got all this money from the government to help them publicise the existence of transgenderism, they were just too shy or they didn't know they had the option to come out as trans. What would you say to that from the perspective of a lesbian? Well, it's actually the opposite. What we've, uh, what we came across a young girl who didn't realize she could be a lesbian. She had never, she, she, when she, what she was taught is that you had two options. You could be shut up or be trans, but she didn't realize that you could be a woman and be same sex attracted. So this is a woman who was in like LGB. Yeah, young, yeah young girl. She was told by the rainbow sort of community. She, that's what yeah. she was told. Wow. And it's not just that. I've been talking to um, lesbians over in uh, California, like older lesbians. They say there are no young lesbians anymore. It's very hard to find them. Because the, the, also the trans community has destroyed the lesbian community. Say, for example, Victoria, a friend of mine, uh, uh, N Nicole, she did a project to see how many lesbian spaces were left. There used to be 102 lesbian spaces so we, so we could have our culture, you know. Uh, and now there's only two. And most of those in programs like Lesfest and things like that, or the Mitch Fest overseas, they were all shut down by trans women. I heard about that. There were, uh, my friend was telling me about, a, you know, a decades-long festival for lesbians yeah. that had been going on for absolutely ages, yeah. once a year, and all these um, trans people turned up who were men. Yeah. And, and and these lesbians were being sexually harassed at their own lesbian festival and yeah. also at the same time told that yeah. their, les their lesbianism doesn't exist anymore because they need to be attracted to female penises. Yeah. <laughs> so it's it's very, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's gender identity ideology has got very little to do with same-sex attraction. It's not. Yeah. Anyway, getting back to this, so, so, so it's a, so getting back to the schools and stuff like that. So this, what I, I suppose out of all this, what, I, what we can say is that it's big, it's a bigger movement than what we think. Just recently, my friend Kit Kowalski has put up um, uh, uh, on her blog about a new program called Camp Out. And what they are is they're targeting um, LGBTQIA plus, 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 plus kids, gender identity, non, gender non-conforming kids to go to a camp for a couple of weeks. That bothers me a lot because we're investigating at the moment a group of um, uh, some Aboriginals are joining LGB Alliance because what they're noticing is gender camps out in the rural areas targeting Aboriginal girls. So you get 10 girls going in and you have eight trans going out. And, and what they feel that this is another way of sterilizing the Aboriginal community, because once you get them onto the, uh, the puberty blockers across sex hormones, you got sterility. So that's what they feel that that program is about for them. But also what I, I notice is because in the AWE, the Australian Workplace Equality Index, there's also a part there that in every organization, you have to have an LGBTQTIA group. So mostly in many corporations, you know, People will decide that they want to have, they like yoga. Anyone else like yoga in the company? Let's have a yoga club. And the, and the organization will say, well, you can use this room at 6 o'clock in the morning. We'll give you a key. Or they might want to play tennis. Or they want to might do meditation or anything like that. It's all organic. And the company will support them. But now, if you've signed up to the AWEI, you have to have an LGBTQTI group. And, and in that group, you also, you in the organization, you have to have a training 
uh, officer, a gender affirmation advisor, as it were, who does a couple of things, which is most worrying in Victoria. They make sure that everyone's compliant to these rules. It's kind of like a Holly a Lawford Smith described it as the Dolores Umbridge from the fifth book of Harry Potter, you know. But they also can, in what I'm concerned about, is they can report to the commission that set up Victoria, which basically sanctions people who's not conforming to gender identity ideology because your state is woke as hell. And that is very, that is at the front and foremost in the education that's being given to our kids, can I just yeah. tell you. They're all oh. told about what constitutes discrimination and bigotry. And it's not what you think. It's what, what is it? Agreement and wanting to hold on to boundaries based on sex. So if literally there are signs, if you feel discomfort um, with the presence of somebody in your, you know, toilet or change room, get over yourself. Wow. And uh, so I was told, <laughs> I was told that uh, even asking questions about um, whether or not it was possible to provide single sex spaces in addition to rather than um, instead, instead of, of yeah. instead of, uh, um, you know, so you would have a, you know, some options for people who are trans, kids who are trans, and then you would continue to provide your single sex spaces and also cater for those people who didn't feel comfortable in either one, you know. Um, and I was told that even raising that could be seen in Victoria as incitement to discrimination. Wow. By a lawyer, and uh, that lawyer put confidential at the top. So I've actually had to speak to some other lawyers to find out if I can even release that. Yeah, wow. Um, so, you know, and this is, and you know, but I've seen it in the curriculums to the kids since then. So, you know, they're told that these things are against the law. And it's essentially um, girls are not allowed to have boundaries. Boundaries. Their, their feelings of privacy based on their bodies are literally put on par with racism. So it's, they say they literally say it's the equivalent of not wanting to share a bathroom with a black person. They're well, literally gaslighting our children into thinking that they are the equivalent of racists just because they want to have some sex-based boundaries. You know, the funny thing is, so I was listening to a talk by um, a black doctor and she was talking about the history of slavery for black women but everything you're describing is what was done to black women they weren't allowed to call themselves women they were okay. birthing persons yeah all the language that we use now that gender identity ideology pushes as inclusive language was the language that was used for women black women slaves like birthing persons see this is one of the reasons why i didn't pick up on how bad the transgender ideology was at first when i was a teacher because i had already known and educated myself about intersex conditions and they yeah. literally use the same language yeah. so as a teacher i'm concerned to we're talking about the affirmation like it's like um you're sorry no you're uh, assigned at birth, assigned at birth sex assigned. that makes sense because they because they couldn't observe it right, Ninety-eight. what is it 99.01 percent or something or 98.02 percent yeah, you can six, see that's right i think you've got these six you know um yeah. Yeah, conditions yeah, yeah. And you may or may not be able to tell on the outside. Sometimes it's wholly internal, yeah. things like that. Um, but, but you know, the, the confusion that those kids face, and I'd always thought to myself, you know, how could I, and as, you know, as a mother, you know, this could happen to one of my children. How can I love my children? I always thought to myself, well, I'm never going to operate on them when they're little. I'm yeah. going to wait until they're older. You know, and now we have genetic testing. Yeah. Um, unless it's just to help them go to the toilet or something. You know, I understand there yeah, are some yeah. conditions where they can't function at first. You know, and that would be so traumatic. But all of that trauma, all of that confusion, even their whole identity as um, really genuinely feeling in between the two sexes in some ways, even though it's turned out later on that, you know, they are biologically male or female distinctively most of the time. It's just confusing to look at them. Yeah. Um, all of their confusion and pain has actually, been... Actually, they, they are actually, they're still binary. Sorry. Yeah. They are, they're still and binary. Stolen and all that language and even the language from religion, spirituality, I've noticed that they've taken the spiritual language from religion and um, the, you know, that middle, middle language about the two sexes from the intersex groups and yeah. they've just created this whole ideology yeah. which they are really relentlessly pushing on children yeah. um, who are obviously defenceless. People in organisations can sort of think, oh, I'll keep my head down, but there are some kids who just can't not say well i don't agree with that yeah. they have no concept about what's going to come down on their heads although they're slowly learning yeah. i just found out this week about a girl who was the only girl in her class not to stand up when the teacher said everybody 
who agrees with, um, you know, affirms these statements and they had these set of statements about, you know, transgenderism, um, you know, stand up if you affirm it and you want to celebrate it and you want to say sorry to, you know, all the damage that's been done to transgender people. You know, this whole big message, this wow. big message that no one could agree to every single thing on there probably. Yeah. She was the only one not to stand up and she just felt humiliated. And, of course, she's feeling excluded and bullied now. She's been cut out of social groups as a kid. Yeah. A teacher psychologically publicly abused and bullied a kid in front of her peers i don't understand how that could be a permissible activity to make them stand up and give their opinion on something like that when they've already told everybody that to disagree is bigotry yeah see this is the thing it's it's one we're seeing pre removal parental authority giving giving choices to kids that they're not capable of making like You've got to be a certain age to get a tattoo, to drink, to smoke, to drive a car, to get permission to go out to a camp or permission to play certain Panadol. sports. To get Panadol at school, I need a parental slip signed. Yeah, that kind of thing. And yet, to remove their breasts or castrate them or put them on drugs, they will do permanent damage, will do permanent damage. It used to be at one stage a, a little while back, they were saying they were not quite sure what the long-term effects were. Although, you know, the animal studies failed and da-da-da-da. But now it's absolute. It will do harm. It will do harm. They still threaten parents with suicide. So I know parents... And that's rubbish. That's absolute myth. That's rubbish. It is absolute rubbish. And it's very clearly not in the best interest of children who cannot consent. We all know that they cannot consent to have their parents removed from those decisions. And I have never, ever, ever seen, and I've gone back and looked, this mature minor information promoted to schools in any other context. I've never oh. seen it. It's only been promoted and we sort of only really became aware of it through this. We've never been given the ability to yeah. confer legal uh, status on them of a mature minor. Normally that has to happen through a doctor or a psychologist yeah. or someone who knows yeah. the family. Yeah. As a teacher, I can tell you there's no principal on this planet, no teacher on this planet that has enough verified information about any family of any kid in that school to be able to actually make a decision about whether that family's fit or unfit. You need to refer it, in my opinion, to the Department of Human Services and Child Safety. There needs to be a proper investigation. There is no safeguarding. This is totally open to abuse. And and isn't it strange because they, they sell this all about as being safeguarding. They sell oh. this all as protection. Oh. And it's just the opposite. Who are, who are children's best protectors in almost every case? Parents. Parents. And now there's a new law in Victoria where the principal, I mean, I've never seen any other organisation given this much power, not even really the police. Yeah. Um, just well, that would change. And just ban parents from school grounds if that principal believes that that person is being threatening. Um, and so threatening could be questions about what is this curriculum? What are you doing with my kid at school? Are you allowing my, they've given my kid a new name at school? And they say, well, you're banned from the property and I don't have to answer your questions. You know, in Victoria, any adult working with a kid in a school, any adult and a kid of any age under 18, so that's any age, that's primary schools, that's kindergarten, I mean, that's early childhood. Yeah. I mean, of course you don't imagine it happening, but there's nothing stopping it. Any age under 18, any adult working with a child and, you know, the canteen lady works with a child. I mean, yeah. you know, and they bring in these... Um, they bring in these specialists from La Trobe University, these safe school specialists. I mean, how, it doesn't even say how Rainbow much... Rainbow Health at Australia Group? There are no... They came there. out of there. Yeah, there so are no... Rainbow there. Health Group was um, the biggest, the, the ones that I think that shaped the, um, contextualised the policy for Victoria, the Rainbow Health. They're the ones also that made that dodgy report to push the conversion ban, um, uh, to support pushing the conversion ban to um, Jill Hennessy a couple of years yeah. back. So, oh, it's very, the players are really clear. Yeah. The people who are pushing this, it's really clear who they are. Yeah. So I, I can decide if your kid is um, really, you know, a real genuine case of transgenderism and I can decide that you, based on no information at all, yeah. uh, as a parent, are untrustworthy. You're going to, because, you know, it is family violence in Victoria now from the 17th of Feb, I think. It is family violence not to affirm a kid in their transgender identity. Wow. They can go to jail for up to 10 years. I think it's a $100,000 fine. Double check that. I think it's something like that. But it's the, it's the most harsh um, penalty scheme in the world for yeah. conversion therapy. And yeah. can we just reiterate that under that conversion therapy ban, that bill, nothing really changed at all except for the issues with transgender kids. Yeah. 
you know, all the things that they said they were going to stop, you know, the, the transitioning or whatever it is, the conversion practices against gay kids, all those things you were talking about before, those horrible things, what were they doing? Ice baths, weird, weird chemical, cast, you know, um, trying to suppress their sexuality, all those things they have legalised to do to trans kids and taken away anyone's right to protest. So I know. All of that stuff that they want, they say they want to stop happening to gay kids. And I'm like, well, you've just legalised it happening to kids who are trans, who, by the way, are mostly the gay kids. Exactly. It, it's, we call it the new conversion therapy. I think I, I remember making a, I want to see, I might actually show it to you. Uh, how, much, how long have we been talking for? Oh, an hour. <laughs> Are we really? Yeah. We might have to come back for the rest of stuff, but I do want to show you something. Hold on, I'll put it onto my other screen. And I'm just going to share it. Share screen. Two. Can you see that? Yeah. So the old therapy... What was believed, you know, ages ago, people thought, oh, the kid's got something wrong in their head. They don't realise that they're really straight. So what we need to do is do gender conversion camps, take them away and, you know, and sort of indoctrinate them and, and, and do what we can to sort of get it clear to them that, that no, they're not, they're not gay. That false nudity. Yeah, electroconvulsive therapy, either to their fingers or to their penises or to genitalia, showing, like they show pictures um, neutral pictures, what might be of the opposite sex for for a guy, or maybe a very attractive guy, and if there was any kind of arousal, they'll shock them. Um, hormone injections, maybe they had too much estrogen or something in it, or androgen or something like that, so let's give them some testosterone. Ritual cleansing, like ice baths. Uh, forced isolation, so that they can think about it, that kind of thing. Forced nudity, and of course there's all that ridicule and social sanctions and there was laws prohibiting blah 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 so that was try was called the conversion therapy then now we say i say the conversion therapy is, is actually gender affirmation mandatory gender affirmation is conversion therapy and it's the same with this camp out what i've hadn't updated this um chart we've got now new gender conversion camps with this camp out and with those um the gender camps that they're running for the Aboriginal um, kids. Well, they run through a school because if they are in... No, they're not. I can't, I can't say much at the moment because we need film and evidence and stuff like that. When we do, hopefully we can get people to listen. I don't know if they care about Aboriginals. I'm saying if they've got Australia. under the law some way for whoever's there at that camp to declare those kids mature minors. That, um, camp, that camp out, by the way, there's no, there's no training of the staff. They have to be over 21 and that's about it. And they're theories, the theories, the mentors, you know. Um, look, but um, puberty like blockers. Giving them. Yeah. Puberty blockers, experimental drugs, and they're not experimental. Men. The experiment's over. We know they cause harm. And they call them puberty blockers, but there's no such thing. They don't block puberty. Castration, double mastectomies, cross-sex hormones, neovaginas and penises. So they will take a big swath out of the leg of a woman and roll it into a, a tube and try to attach it to the, the groin area as a penis. So those things necrify and fall off. Yeah. Because it's not an organ. Or they try to make neovaginas, which they make a hole in the, um, in the, the male. I don't know what they do, but they have to pump them to keep them they open. They the penis, basically. They grow, they grow here. They'll get... That they have some conditions where the poo comes through that that or I just tell you cat that uh, if they do put them on puberty blockers little boys yeah, yeah. when it comes time you know they have an almost 100 percent success rate of uh dissociating them from their sexed bodies by yeah. that stage and so the, yes they agree yes i am not a 100 percent male or female so i'll keep going and they keep going and they say they'll have the cross-sex hormones and the surgeries and at that stage for the boys in particular there's not enough their penises haven't grown and so they have a like a micro penis basically and they can they don't have enough material to make this neo vagina and so they use some of the sphincter and of course they suffer with terrible problems with germs and odor mm. and they have to dilate themselves every day because it's an yeah. open wound that keeps trying to heal yeah it and what, ha what happened to their sexual pleasure well that doesn't matter apparently the thing that i find absurd about all this is that any of my children they could come to me and say mum i'm gay and i would say 
okay. And they would still have a functioning body. Yeah. Yeah. If anyone comes to me and says, I'm trans, well, they're going to be on this train to actually ruin the body that they have. A gay, a gay person can have sex. They can be healthy. They're not going to get no, you know, early onset um, heart disease, um, osteoporosis for, yeah. for no reason. You know, they're just going to have a normal life and be gay with whatever, whatever else genetic issues they got dealt with in the lottery kind of thing. Yeah. The trans train, however, is just nothing but physical trauma. Yeah. Even just the hormones, even if they don't have those surgeries, even if, you know, I mean, there's footage that's famous about this lunatic woman saying, oh, well, if you want to have breasts later, if you, if you think you've made a mistake, well, you can just go and get them. No, that's rubbish. They're an organ, darling. They're for breastfeeding as well. It's not just for the gays. You know, they have a actual function. It, it, it's um, shocking. My niece, um, she got breast cancer and double mastectomies. It, it was horrendous, yeah. you know. And and they've been remodeled and all the rest of it. But And they make these surgeries sound so magical. Eat the teats. There's this horrible, I think, Californian thing. She runs these TikToks and she says, eat the teats. And then you've got pictures of... These are surgeons carrying buckets of press at you. Like, this is a happy thing to have. It's yeah. just disgusting. I just think I, anyone who disagrees with what we're saying today, until you have watched 20, 20 minimum detransitioner videos, yes, then just don't even bother trying to speak to us because we've done our We've done the homework. Yeah, we have done no. our homework. We've done our homework. Now, I want, moving on, I think we need to go and show the website. <laughs> that we're launching an hour ago. Yeah, that we're launching. Because I think we're quite happy with the stuff that we're doing. Let me bring, share it. Hold on. If you are a parent or a teacher, a grandparent even, anyone working in the school, if you see any of this, because people don't believe us, of course, they say we're lying. They say everybody loves it. You're just We belong to an outright group. They love having their boundaries ruined. They love having, you know, all their roles in sport and singing and acting taken by the boys. They don't. And so what we, but they, of course, everyone's afraid to say it. So if you have a testimony, you can submit it to our website anonymously if you like, or you can tell right me your there. name right there. Yeah. And we will post them. Okay. So on this website, what I've done is I've provided um, a whole bunch of resources. Some of these we'll be changing because we're um, tailoring and contextualizing them for Australia. Um, so we've got some quick two-page sheets here for, from the Coalition of Biological Reality, with, which we're a part of as well, um, that that's been, has been contextualised for Australia. I highly recommend this resource. It's a gender resource guide out of the state. It's a wonderful resource. It gives you an idea about the basics of what gender identity ideology is about, um, uh, what, what it impacts, etc. all the basic stuff. Now, we're always... Well, one of the horrible things that are told, um, told parents of uh, LGB kids and autistic kids that if you don't trans these kids they'll commit suicide it's a lie so i've got an article about suicide facts and myths around trans children what we call trans children um society for evidence-based gender medicine i'm actually going to move this at the moment because we're going to uh, we've asked some permission to completely localize it to australia and it's mainly for school teachers stats for gender org gives you all the facts in a very quick and succinct way on everything, sexual function, mental health, mortality, everything you need to know, it's all there. One of the myths is that this is a highly uh, marginalized, transgender is a highly marginalized uh, and abused and vulnerable community. They always say that transgender people are killed. No, since 2008, there's only four trans, trans women that have been killed. Um, and there were um, three of them was prostitutes and one was from um, their partner. And prostitution, unfortunately, is a highly violent and dangerous profession. Um, but it goes into a bit more de um, detail about it. Now, one thing to note in the Denton's handbook that I spoke about earlier, the guidance given by Thomson Reuters, a media conglomerate to all the LGBTQIA trans activists, was um, overstate hate crimes. Mm and paint um, the trans community as highly marginalized uh, and in need of help and support. Now look, can I make a statement here? Because we're saying trans, 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 like they're a whole homo homogeneous group. They're not, okay? They're really not. And to be honest, I really don't think much of this is about the trans children. I th it's usually more about the allies who are not trans at all. If, it, if you talk to a lot of psychologists and to doctors, 
most trans people that I've come across, like actual trans, transsexuals, etc., just want to get on with life and live their life without hassle. That's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about taking kids, and, and, and by the way, this doesn't happen to adults, to kids mainly, and then putting them on a pathway to bypass puberty and put them on a, a pathway, we're making decisions for their whole life. And if they're not capable of making decisions. This is what this is really what we're about. So please, um, oh, you can call us bigots. You're going to call us bigots anyway if you're in the trans community because that's your default setting. But we've put we've put the evidence here. I've done a little video that I shared with the United Nations on exactly what the business model of youth transitioning pays out. It's a 5.2. It's more than 5.2 in trillion industry now. It's growing, growing. Um, here's a lot of Australian perspectives on transgender children from um, people in our community, um, psychologists, psychiatrists, lawyers, etc., etc., and some fast facts about gender identity. Once you get one person go trans, it's almost a social contagion. There's three times more, point, three point five times more likely that other people will join up in that group, and it's quite a pandemic in a sense. In the last seven years, it's been a four thousand increase in children seeking treatment, and it's mainly girls. It used to be it used to be that you had older men, you know, they just came to point, no, this is who I am, but now it's young. It used girl. to be exclusive, almost exclusively, you yeah. know, 100% exclusively male um, yeah. issue, you know, identity, I should say. Yeah. So if you are a teenager or someone who's, you know, in primary school, school can be stressful, you know, all the kids at school are stressed and anxious, there's this social jungle. I mean, they're all vulnerable to being sold this um, solution. If you want attention in primary school, if you want everyone to tiptoe around your emotions and give you special treatment, if you want attention yeah. and praise for doing really not much at all, but having this identity, yeah. then of course you're going to adopt this identity. They're making it um, profitable, too profitable to these very vulnerable, emotionally oh. vulnerable kids who... It, there's a lot of money in it. There's in, a lot of money. That's right. And... It, it's dangerous and these children are being harmed. We're, I'm running this site because I believe that schools are being used to undermine parents. Yeah. Teachers are being coerced into undermining parents and all of it together is bad for children. Yeah. It makes children less safe. It puts them at risk for you know, going, being funneled into these surgeries, this life. I'm going to bring you back to this because we've covered that. Yes. <laughs> but... Um, but yeah, but so, so to use this as a resource as well. So we're starting to put all the policies up so you can see what the laws are that you don't know about. And this is a gender affirmation model that we're talking about um, that they follow. The resources, school resource, video resources um, that we've collected of detransitioners what, speaking about this, D sisters speaking about this, doctors, psychiatrists, medical practitioners, etc. speaking about this. Recently, uh, uh, the LGB Alliance actually put a brilliant letter together. Uh, yes, I was part of writing it. So <laughs> but it was, it was sent out to um, the best endocrinologists in the world, uh, Dr. Michael Big, um, and well-known people in the space like Dr. Michael Biggs, people who had worked in gender clinics, etc., to um, examine it. And we sent this out to the Australian Psychological Society, our, our Royal Australian New Zealand General Practitioner Society, AAPI, etc., etc. But what's good about it is we've broken it down into parts about exactly, you know, what why puberty blockers are harmful or experimental, etc. It's just facts. It's facts. So for you know to know what it is. So that's the kind of website that we're providing. It's to for testimonies for people to speak out because we're being shut down to speak out about this. But this is dangerous, and we're giving you the, the, the data and the facts. We've told the Australian Psychological Society, the LGBT Alliance has told um, psych, the AAPS, that the reason we're doing this, if they don't act on this, we're, we're, we're preparing for litigation of detransitioners. Because you took kids when they weren't in the stage they could, they could make these decisions, and you caused them permanent harm. Oh, I wish we could take the politicians to court as well. For what they're doing you can take them to the ballot box don't forget yes and let's take them to the ballot box but this is there's money in it there's power in it yeah. anyway i think i think i think i think yeah. that's enough <laughs> where's my oh there we go there's a pause here 
stop sharing. It's a lot, isn't it? It's a lot. Yes. You can dive in so deep into any aspect of it. It is. It's just her. I find it. You know, I. There is nothing that's upset me more than this in my whole entire life. And I've had a life of 15 homes and abuse and social, and you know, being attacked by pedophiles and you name it, and violence and all the rest of it. But none of it upsets me more than what they're doing to kids in your schools. 100% agree. And I've never been in a position where people are trying to coerce me to yeah. take part in things that I think are dangerous and which allow pedophiles to more easily access children because yeah. we've destroyed all their boundaries about privacy and sexuality it's disgusting yeah and, you know parents and i know that most parents and teachers don't like it so yeah yes please please write in we'll keep yeah. your details private we are so we'll we'll... the names of schools but if you could put that in there just for our records yeah but um, but we will give you as much information as possible and get this out as much as possible. Now Moira was on TV, so I put a link on that on the website as well to see that. But yeah, please, please get informed because most of you are not informed on what's going on. I think we're done. We're thank done. you, Moira. No, <laughs> we'll be back in about a month's time. <laughs> Cheers. Bye. Bye.